Okay. Well, the day has finally come. The other day, after one month, this is what's called the Harnage DSMA. Okay, it's, there's a DSM 59, which is a manual machine. This is the A version of it, which is automatic. Now, this machine really is a hybrid automatic screw machine. And what I say by hybrid is that it runs like a, it, it's set up like, you, you can set it up like a, uh, um, a secondary operation machine like the DV-59 or the DSM-59, which, you know, you do this, turret, all that. It does all that automatically. But the advantage to it is over a, um, a, a like a brown and sharp screw machine is that I can go from one thirty-second of an inch up to inch and a sixteenth, and then I could actually, if I wanted to, make this a secondary operation machine where I loaded the piece in and out. I can I could um, program it so that it stops cycle, put a piece in, lock it with the collets, and then um, uh, cycle start and machine will run and do the second operation. So there's two things you can do with it now. This machine complements the Harnage uh, Chucker, which is over there on the other side of the room. This one has the bar feed on it. I don't know if you can see it in the mirror. I'll get a picture of it after. As we haven't really set up the bar feed just yet. It's there, kind of getting an idea. We just now, yesterday, day before yesterday, got this machine running. And the problem with it is, it's, first of all, it's a 1972 machine. And uh, back then, it probably was $30,000, $40,000 back then. And... Um, uh, I paid two thousand dollars for it, and that was a bargain, really, because they go for thirty-five. I've seen a beat-up one on eBay for thirty-five hundred dollars. These go for about five grand easily, but this one, uh, Tommy Cook had this one down there, and it, he wasn't selling. He wasn't selling. He said, "Look, you want that thing? I'll give you a really good deal to move it out." And I got lucky. The problem was that when I got it here, we set it all up. Got it all hooked up, turned it on, hoped for the best, and did expect some issues. And we did have an issue. There was some things wrong. And believe me, after a month of every day concentrating on this machine, I could actually repair these things now if anybody had a problem. That's how much I know about it. It runs off of electrical, which has a 110 control with relays. Now, the relays, I'll get one, show you. This is, I got a bucket full of them here. I got extra ones. They're brown, uh, uh, Alan Bradley. And even though they may look the same, they're not all the same, but I've got a bucket of them there. And it runs off of these relays, a, a couple of timer relays, special timing relays. And it also has hydraulic and it has uh, air pressure. So it works off of air pressure, hydraulic, and electrical, all three things. So any one of those things could cause you an issue. Now, it started off with a timer, at least we thought it was a timer, and the timer, uh, and I had to say that there was a fellow, Tom, that works at Hardage, that uh, was very helpful on the phone. He got me kind of a basic idea of how, how it works, and he was very helpful. And um, there's only so much you can do. And he said, listen, if you really got a problem, call me after Christmas. By the way, it's two days before Christmas. So this is a Christmas present to me. And um, he says, we'll have the repairman can come out, but $1,000 a day. And I says, well, I'm not going to dump another $1,000 in hopes that it works, but I want to learn this myself. So with the help of my son, Dan, and a little bit of Sherman helped me, we got this thing running. And what it finally basically was, was uh, first of all, it started out to be a timer, which turned out to be a switch, but when the switch wasn't engaging, we finally got that to work. It still wasn't running because there was a hydraulic cylinder, and I have one here, the old one I took off. Where is that? Here it is. This is a Vickers, a Vickers uh, electric solenoids, 110 volts. They make them in different voltages, and this particular one does whatever it does. This one actually controls the turret. Now, that one still may be good, or if I can repair it, get a repair kit, or send it back to Vickers, maybe they can fix them, I don't know. But I got a new one down there, and I called the Vickers company up, and they now own by Eaton, and they said, well, this is what you need, and there's a new numbers now. So I got a new one, 
the, the modern one, which I have the numbers of it in the proper thing. So we put that in. So that was the problem. So the, the switch was working, but it wasn't allowing the solenoid to open up, and that controls the turret return, forward and return. And the way this works, I'll get a close-up of it here. The way this works is this is a programming unit, and you, there's micro switches above here. And when these little lobes, they're little tiny lobes, when they come up in contact, contact with those micro switches, it opens up relays and it does things. And when you're running, you can hear them kicking in and out. And it allows the thing to go back and forth. And everything runs off this turret. The cross slides, all three, there's, there's a independent forward slide, independent rear slide, and an independent vertical slide with a, with a, a, a part chute here. And uh, it changes speeds, it'll reverse forward and reverse, it'll tap, it'll deep drill and peck like it'll go and we'll do all that, I'll show you. This machine is fabulous, it's fabulous. And when I get it running, in another week or so, I'll have it actually up and running completely with doing parts. Right now I got aluminum in there and I'm just practicing with the aluminum and I gotta learn how to set it up. The one disadvantage to it over CNC. With this machine, you have to have form tools. They have to be, if you want to put a certain radius undercut, it has to be that size. Whereas on the, on the uh, CNC, you can use a smaller tool and generate that radius in there, like, or whatever, or the angle, whatever. Um, you cannot thread with it, uh, uh, chase the thread. You can die chase the thread with a die, acorn dies, or um, uh, a geometric head. You can do that. So you got to live with it. That's it. Now the other machine over there, that you've seen that. I've done a video on that where you can do it actually do the threading. But um, uh, this machine is absolutely fabulous. And I got it shut off right at the moment because it's pretty noisy. And then we got the air compressor up there. And it doesn't use that much air. I got to get a, there's a leak somewhere. I got to work on getting the leak tightened up. And once I do that, it really doesn't take that much. It's got a hydraulic co collet closer, which is good. It's not running on air. So I read something about they have these uh, constant something or other, and they run off of air, and it can psh, psh, they're constantly using air. This one's hydraulic, it seems to work fine. The bar feed, which is back there out of the picture, is just air pressure, about 20 pounds of air pressure, and when the collet opens, I've got a program where there's a stop here, and it comes out, stop comes out, pushes the piece, holds it, collet closes, it goes back, and it starts the cycle. Cuts it off, Opens the collet, pushes the part out. I had this thing running for an hour and a half yesterday, just running and cutting hair, just to try it. And it was running beautiful, man. Just great machine. I'm really happy with it so far. Uh, I've got a few things to fix. I discovered a couple of things. Uh, we rigged up a button here to um, cycle it automatically. So if I wanted to skip a cycle, I just push that button and it will automatically skip the cycles when I'm setting it up. I'm going to put that button right up here on the panel. So all I got to do is push that every time I want to cycle, to skip a cycle, skip an operation. These down here are hydraulic valves. They're feeds. They're needle valves. So by putting them in closer, it, less oil goes through. By opening up, it, it allows the parts to run faster or slower, the, the feeds. That's all the feeds here. You have uh, the stops here. You have all the, the stops back here. There's a set of stops just like on a regular turret lathe. And I'll get all that operation so you can see it. But I'm going to fire it up. And uh, oh, by the way, I wanted to mention, these, are, these buttons here are the dwell. Dwell. Now, what, what is dwell? Well, I'll tell you what dwell is. Let's say you're going to tap something. All right, the tap, way the tap works is it's engaged. It's got a pin. And as when you stop the turret from moving forward, the tap continues to go, and then when it's a, it disengages that pin, it just spins free like you saw on my hard edge uh, chucker, and then it stops, reverses, and it pushes that thing back, and then push it, and it, it dwells going back too, All right, and then it changes. So you need to have those dwells for that purpose. There's other reasons for them, like, like say when you're if you're ever used on a lathe and you want to just kind of let that thing ride there for a second to kind of clean it up instead of going in and, and uh, to make size and all those rides, it just kind of sparks out, if you will. And, 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 and so you want to set those dwells. Now, right now, the dwells are not working. Uh, and the reason is that 
we have a, this is a solenoid, that's a, it's called a timer. There's four of them in there. And this one may be good, it may be bad, I don't know. But I've just bought another one now on eBay. These particular ones right here, this model, sells for anywhere from $300 to $800. I've seen them on there. The, there's another one that they have that has, and I, I, I should tell you that these two, these two fittings here, uh, terminals, are to run a remote potentiometer. And what the remote potentiometer does is you can vary the time of when it shuts off. You can vary it. The difference between the one with the remote and the one where the potentiometer is built in is just the potentiometer. So if I had known this two days ago, I wouldn't have spent $300 to get the, the all I'd have to do is just buy the one with the timer, cut the timer off, put, and pass the wires through the hole and wire nut them to the to the wires that control. Now, in here, this I know this is complicated, there's a lot to absorb, but in here, there's micro switches. One for each different stage of the turret. Six of them in there. And every time this goes around, it engages one of those micro switches. And one of the micro switches engages one of these potentiometers. Six of them here. And then the other three are the cross slide, the rear slide, and the vertical slide here. And they're all what's called dwells. So you can vary the dwell wherever you want. And that's what this timer does. It varies the dwell. So if I hadn't spent the 300, I would have just converted one of the other ones. And in fact, that's what I'm going to do. There's no difference between. Now, when I get the other one, I'll explain to you all how to do it. But all you got to do is disconnect the potentiometer that's built right into the face here without these terminals. And either wire, take the old one and put this one on and just solder it to it or just pass the wires through the hole and wire nut them to the wires that do the, that do the remote. Simple as that. You save yourself a lot of money. There are the the, the, the non-remote ones that are identical to this, identical exact same thing except for that potentiometer, go for 35 to 70 bucks on eBay. This one here, for some reason, they want to charge $700, $800. There's not any difference. None. So I'm glad I, I, I discovered that. But anyway, that's it. Uh, this machine is just absolutely awesome. It's got the hardage quality. And to me, that's better than a Mercedes. That's better than a Rolls Royce. That's a Bentley, in my opinion. These machines are fabulous. Accurate, everything about them. So uh, I'm going to fire it up. And I'm just kind of feeding the stock by hand now. And um, just until I get the things set up. It was just the other day. Now there's also, run on these rails here, there's a, a big plastic hood that rolls back and forth to keep the coolant from flying all over. I'm not going to use the coolant now. There's a big coolant pump over there we're going to use. And we replaced the plastic because it was all shot out. So we replaced the plastic. But they call them, because of that hood, they call them covered wagons. And I'll uh, post a picture. You can see what they look like. Uh, th th that that they call them covered wagons for when you see the picture you understand but to me this beats the cnc because i don't understand cnc mechanical electromechanical hydraulic i understand i was able to troubleshoot this i got all the drawings i've got all the hydraulic drawings i've got all the troubleshooting manuals everything i all came with the machine and i was able to do it and also with the help of the fellow in uh amira new york where they are tom uh he was great help so uh, if you got a DSMA or you see one and you don't want to spend the big money and the books and learn how to G-code and all that, beep, boop, beep, the bop, well, this is the way to go. It's no, no different than setting up a DSMA, or I'm sorry, DSM-59 or DV-59. It's no different. Just this one runs automatically. So I'm going to fire it up now, and hopefully the air compressor won't go off, but if it does, you've got to have to deal with the noise.